first thing we are going to do is actually project out income. So usually on the income statement, everything sort of flows from income, at least these operating items up here. So usually everything will flow from revenue. And so revenue is the most important thing that we nail down. It's really important that we nail that down and get that right. And if we can get revenue down, then everything else will sort of flow from that. So let me show you how we're going to go ahead and do that. Down here, we are going to break apart revenue by its individual pieces. So once again, food and stuff has six different segments, discount food, household products, and so on. And management was so kind as to give us the breakout of each of those segments over the past three years. Now to get that breakout, it's pretty rare for the financial statements to actually spell it out. So usually what you have to do is ask management for that breakout. But if you can't get the exact breakout, the next best thing you can do is ask for a rough estimate or rough percentage. Say, hey, what percent is discount food? Or what percent is household products? Even if you can get a couple of these percents, you can lump the rest all together. And that's better than nothing. But anyway, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be projecting out each of these individual segments by year. So we're going to be projecting out discount food, household products, and so on. After we project those out, we'll sum it all together. And then that total will be referenced up here in this total. Now to project out cost of sales or cost of goods sold, whatever you want to call it, SG&A expenses and other operating expenses, what we are going to be doing is using these metrics. So instead of actually projecting out the cost of goods sold, Instead, we are going to project out the gross profit margin, and then we'll back into the cost of goods sold. And same with SG&A expenses, we are going to say that those are a percent of sales. So maybe it's 10% of sales or 12% of sales, and then we'll reference sales to get the SG&A number. And same with other operating expenses, we're going to do the same exact thing. So really, these three items right here all flow from our revenue assumptions. So it's really important that we nail that down and get that really, really accurate. So with that, let's go ahead and go through actually projecting out each of these individual segments at Food and Stuff. So to go ahead and start, what I'm gonna do is come over here and first calculate how much each of these segments have grown each of these years. So for 2016, for discount food, what I'm gonna do is do equals open parenthesis, I'm going to take this year minus last year divided by the prior year. And what that's going to give us is the percent change. So we see that from 2015 to 2016, revenue in the discount food department grew by 29%. Now my suspicion is most of that was driven by the acquisition. So I'll copy that over. And we see that in 2017 is a much more normal 8%. So one of the tricky things when you're doing financial modeling is if a company is constantly doing acquisitions and things like that, the financial modeling can get really tricky. But here, they made an acquisition in 2016, they didn't make any in 2017, and management has said they are not projecting to do any more acquisitions for the next few years. So what I can do is actually copy this formula down here, 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 and here. So now what we have calculated is the percent growth for each of these individual segments. You'll notice that all of these segments really had a huge boost in 2016 due to the acquisitions of buckets and more. And then in 2017 is much more normalized. Okay, so what we are gonna do next is we are gonna go ahead and make assumptions about the revenue growth for each of these segments on these lines right here. And then what we'll do is actually calculate what the revenue is going to be for each of those years. So it's always best practice to actually use percents rather than absolute numbers. So it is not good to say, oh, I think revenue next year will be 56 million and then 60 million on this year and so on. Instead, we want to use percents. That's going to allow us to really be more accurate with our financial modeling. And it's going to make it so it's easier to understand what's going on. And if someone looks at it, they're going to say, okay, so if sales are 56 million next year, well, 
is that high or low? What what percent is that? If it's only a 2% increase, maybe they say, oh, well, that's perfectly fine. But if it's a 30% increase, well, then it just looks crazy. So we always want to deal in percents. Mints. Now, if management doesn't give you these numbers, you can always go to industry reports and see what's going on in the industry. And maybe the industry is expected to grow 5, 6, 7% over the next few years. Then you can use those assumptions. Or if you want to use demographics of an area, so if you are in a local economy and you're expecting the local economy to grow at a pace of 3% or whatever. But try to come up with a good growth number that's as accurate as it can be. So we are going to assume, once again, that management has already given us these assumptions. And so we are going to assume that they are expecting discount food to grow by 8% in 2018, then 7%, 5%, 4%, or 5%, and then 4%. So 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. That's what they're expecting sales to do with discount food. Now, usually, unless it's a really high growth company, you know, you can't really sustain high levels of growth. So I'd be leery if you put 20%, 20%, and you made it 20% every single year. Unless it's a super hot company and it's growing like crazy, uh, sure, you can do that, but try to be extremely conservative when you're doing your financial modeling. Okay, household products, they aren't going to grow quite as fast. It's going to be 7%, 6.5%, 5, 4, and 3. And then for garden supplies, it's actually going to be the exact same growth as the household products. So I'm just going to copy these and paste it down here. Buckets, this is going to be a fairly good growing area. So it's going to be 8, then we'll do 7, 6, 5, and 4. So exactly the same as the discount food up here. For lead-based paint, unfortunately, people are becoming more and more concerned with lead in their paint. I don't know why. And so they aren't expecting this to grow a ton. It's going to be 3%, 2%, 1%, 1%, and then 0%. And then finally, for other, we are just going to put a flat 4% right here and here. And then 3, 3, and 3. So last year, it only grew by 4%, so we aren't expecting this to be a high growth area, so we just put a pretty low conservative number right here. Okay, so now that we have these percents projected out, what we can do is go ahead and project out what the income is going to be for each of these segments. So what I'm going to do is do equals, I'm going to take the prior year times, open parenthesis, 1 plus the growth rate. And then I'm going to close parenthesis. Hit enter, and I'll copy that over. And now we see what growth is going to be over the next five years. And then what I can do is copy this and paste it here, 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 and here. And now we have completely projected out income. Like I said at the beginning, the income statement is actually really easy to project. It's the balance sheet that's somewhat of a bear to do. Okay, so now what we can do is actually go ahead and figure out what the total revenue is going to be. We already have the formula right here. It's just adding each of these individual pieces. So what I'm going to do is just copy this formula over here. And now the final piece is going to be calculating the overall growth rate at the company. So what I can do is actually just grab one of these formulas up here and copy it down here. Should be the same. Yep, same. So I can copy this over. And now we see what the growth rate is going to be every single year. So even though the biggest segment is growing by 8% and the second one by 7%, due to these sort of slower growing segments down here, the overall growth rate is 7.4%. And then it drops all the way down to 3.6% in five years from now.